It's noted as one of the best and most haunting films of 2021. The Power of the Dog is available to stream on Netflix, and our Matt Perrin has his take on the film in this week's movie review. Welcome to another Monday. There were some notable new releases this past weekend, but with Oscar nominations being announced in less than 24 hours, I decided to get in the spirit and review a movie that is considered frontrunner for Best Picture. It's been a while since I sat down to take in a Western, but with this star-studded cast, I was interested to see what the hype was all about. It took Best Picture and several other awards at the Golden Globes, so I was expecting something amazing. And without any further ado, let's take a look at the Netflix original, The Power of the Dog. Our film begins with Phil and George Burbank, played by Benedict Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons, respectively. They are wealthy ranchers in the 1925 West. Phil is the respected macho cowboy, while George seems a little more uppity. One day, after driving cattle to market, the brothers and their ranch hands are eating at a restaurant run by the widow proprietor, Rose, and her bit of an odd duck son, Peter, played by Kirsten Dunst and Cody Smith McPhee. Phil relentlessly taunts Peter, bringing both he and his mother to tears as the cowboy's only jeer. Later, George returns to comfort Rose. They begin a relationship and are soon married, much to the dismay of Phil. Rose and Peter soon end up at the ranch where we see Phil begin to unravel, emotionally torturing Rose all the time. She begins to unravel as well, turning to drink and causing problems as she does so. At first, seeming very subtly threatening towards Peter, the tides seem to shift as Phil begins to take an interest in the boy and starts teaching him certain skills. As the movie progresses, it keeps you guessing as to which direction it is going to head. The true nature of masculinity comes into question. We start to see the layers peel back on Phil and begin to understand what makes him act the way he does. We see a mystery behind Peter and learn of his past, which in a way draws he and Phil closer together, much to the hatred of Rose. Our minds build different scenarios, but we wait to see which one actually plays out. So, what to say about this one? It is absolutely gorgeous cinematography. It has amazing actors that absolutely put on a clinic, and it is slow, almost to the point of being boring to watch at first. I was watching this movie, and for the majority of the runtime, I was just wondering, how did this win the Golden Globe for Best Picture? What am I missing? Then the last 15 minutes happened with such a dark twist that you can't help but respect the film. You look back at the scenes you thought were just boring minutiae and realize that they were small details building to this climax. I was surprised to see that a lot of critics had to watch it twice to get exactly what was going on. To me, it was a well set up twist that delivers, but if you watch it and just can't stand it, I guess give it a second viewing. As I mentioned, the acting is outstanding and Benedict Cumberbatch made the character his own. He makes you hate him as a villain and then feel sorry for him, wondering if he were actually a villain at all. Now, what no one is talking about, what made it really hard to watch for me, isn't the pacing. It's the name of a single character. Spider-Man No Way Home was the biggest movie of 2021. It had Doctor Strange, played by Cumberbatch, speaking in an American accent, interacting with Peter Parker. Now we have Benedict Cumberbatch, in the same American accent, interacting with another kid named Peter. Every time I heard him say, hey, Pete, or hey, Peter, I was taken out of the movie wondering why Doctor Strange was dressed like a cowboy. Plus, we had the original Mary Jane Watson saying Peter over and over again, too. Look, I know it's based on a book, but change the kid's name just for my sanity, please. This has been your Monday Movie Music. Back to you.